victory. Thank you. The first reading is taken from Exodus chapter 33, verse 12 to 16. Exodus chapter 33, verse 12 to 16. I'm reading from the New International Version. Let us hear the word of God. Moses said to the Lord, You have been telling me, lead these people. But you have not let me know whom you will send with me. You have said, I know you by name, and you have found favor with me. If you are pleased with me, teach me your ways so I may know you and continue to find favor with you. Remember that this nation is your people. The Lord replied, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Then Moses said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and with your people unless you go with us? What else will distinguish me and your people from all other people on the face of the earth? This is the word of God. Our second reading is from Mark, Mark 4, verse, verses 35 to 41. Mark 4, verses 34, 35 to 41. I'm reading from the English Standard Version. Let's hear the word of God. On that day, when evening had come, he said to them, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. And other boats were with him. And a great wind storm arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat, so that the boat was already filling. But as he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion, and they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. He said to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear, and they said to one another, who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? This is the word of God. LIC. LIC. A pastor friend of mine once asked me, how come that whenever the LIC choir ministers, you think you are listening to the original recording? Glory to God. Hallelujah. May the Lord continually anoint you and make your ministry part of the transforming process in this church in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. Please talk to the Lord for yourself, for me. The Lord has been speaking to us from the beginning of the service. He has just spoken to us. Please ask him to continue as his word comes to us through preaching. Pray that the Lord will remove every drowsiness from our eyes. Make us alert and attentive. Pay attention to his word and walk with it. Move with it. Live here with it that our lives will bring him pleasure. Our lives will be a blessing. So we thank you, our dear Lord and our God, for who you are to us. 
You are so gracious and kind and wonderful and excellent. Thank you for your presence here with us, Lord. You've been speaking to us. Continue to speak. Give us a word in season for the year ahead of us to bring glory to you and joy to our hearts, blessings on our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Entering a new year is very much like taking a journey into the unknown, to a place you've never been. I don't know whether you ever had the, had the experience of asking somebody for directions. Very early in life, I was told that when you are in London, you ask for directions of anybody, a policeman, anybody. He tells you, oh, turn the corner and it's right there, you can't miss it. When he says you can't miss it, it means you can't find it. Have you ever been in a rural setting, on a rural path or road, and have had to ask for directions from a tired farmer arriving from farm with his wife? Opening, where is the next village? How far is it from here? Oh, you take, go ahead. Once you climb the next hill ahead of you, the village is right ahead of you. What he will not tell you is how far it is from where you are to the hill that you are going to climb. A journey into the unknown is full of trepidation. Now we have what we call the Google Maps. Google Maps. It gets to a point, you don't know where you are going. The arrow says, turn left at the next intersection. The voice over says, turn right. Where do you turn? How do you turn? How do you get on? I always prefer to have somebody with me. Somebody who knows where I'm going, who is willing and ready to take me. I'll pay anything for that. Friends in Christ, we are on the brink of entering another year, 2024. As I've thought and pondered over what is going to happen in this year, the word that keeps coming to me is uncertainty. Uncertainty. I'm sure you say that well, we could use that to describe any new year. Yes, but 2024 is full of uncertainties. If there's any certainty we have, it is uncertainty. Look at the world scene now. A few days ago, Russia has escalated the bombardment of Ukrainian cities. Two years now they've been fighting. What is going to happen next? Ukraine's resources are waning, drying out. There's donor fatigue. What is going to happen? What are the implications for world food production when Russia overruns, if Russia overruns Ukraine? The UN appears to be hapless, helpless, finding a solution. What is going to happen? Uncertainty. Israel, Hamas, Palestine, uncertainty. Are the Arabs going to join the war? Are they going to fight against Israel? What is going to happen? Uncertainty. Uncertainties. On our own local front, we have just prayed. We are going to have an election. In some quarters, some have described the election as a jihad. Uncertainty. What is going to happen? What will happen after the election? How will we get on? It is in this uncertain situation, it is into this uncertain condition that this evening I believe the Lord has a message, message for us. His message is that his presence will go with us. God's presence will go with us. Hallelujah. Friends, the first point I'm making is that God's presence is God's person. God's presence with us is God's person with us. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. God's presence is God's person with us. Matthew 1, 23. 
See this statement, God with us. There's no verb in it. God with us. Now, preposition followed by whatever. God with us. God's presence will go with us. That is the assurance. That's our confidence. When God says his presence will go with us, friends, note that it is not, it's not anything new or something he hasn't done before. We have read from Exodus 33. God promised Israel, promised Moses, my presence will go with you. Now, let us note how God's presence traveled with the Israelites. Then we shall note the implications therefrom. God asked Moses to make or prepare, build a tabernacle. Note with me very carefully. The tabernacle had three cubicles, three compartments, the outer court. Now, the outer court had a bronze altar. It is through the eyes of our New Testament readers that we see that Jesus Christ was foreshadowed in that altar. The altar for burnt offerings, for sacrifice, that was a shadow of Jesus Christ because he, we know now, is the ultimate sacrifice. The Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. In the outer court was also the bronze basin filled with water. Now we know that Jesus is the living water. That bronze basin often ran dry. Jesus will never leave us. His presence was foreshadowed in the journey of the Israelites. In the second compartment, second part of the tabernacle, was the holy place. Two things. The table of showbread was there. Now we know that Jesus is the living bread, the bread of life, foreshadowed in that tabernacle. There was the golden lampstand. The golden lampstand standing for perpetual light in the presence of God to guide the Israelites. Now you and I know that Jesus Christ is the light of the world. What was foreshadowed in the presence of God with the Israelites, now we know it in better terms. God with us. God's presence is God's person. Jesus with us. Then there was the most holy place. The most holy place. The main item there was the Ark of the Covenant. In the Ark of the Covenant, there were three items. There was a golden urn containing some manna. Food to carry the Israelites to their destination. Now we know that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from God. And who is the word of God? It's Jesus Christ. What was manna to them, for them as today? What was manna to them, for them then? Now to us is Jesus Christ, the word of God. Which one is more certain? Also in the ark was the stone tablets of the law which Moses placed in the ark. Now you and I know that the law came from Moses but grace and truth comes from Jesus Christ. John 1.17 What we have, the presence we have, the direction we have, the accompaniment we have, the person we have is not the shadow. Is the person, Jesus Christ, God's presence with us. Then finally in the ark was Aaron's staff that had budded, showing his high priestly role, position. Now you and I know that Jesus Christ is our high priest after the order of Melchizedek. No beginning, no end. He is your shepherd. He is my shepherd. He says, I am with you, God with us. That is his name. Now, 
what were the implications of God being with the Israelites at that time? And how, what does that show us today, this year, into the next year? By virtue of God's presence, the Israelites experienced God's protection. So God's presence going with us tells us that we will know and experience God's protection. In Exodus 14, we see how God miraculously protected the Israelites from the invading army of Egypt. God shielded them, destroyed the Egyptian army. God's protection went with them, will go with us. In addition to God's protection, they had God's provision. God's provision. So when God says, my presence will go with you, one implication is that you will have God's pro provision. Not only God's protection, you will have God's provision. So in Exodus 15, 16, we see how manna falls from heaven for the Israelites. God's adequate provision. Every day of the week, except on the Sabbath day, God says, my presence will go with you, will go with me. It means that his provision will be adequate for us. Hallelujah. The third response, the third implication of God's presence going with them was his peace. God's peace. They needed God's peace. God's presence with them meant God's peace with them. God's peace on them. You see in Exodus 33, which we had, was just read to us, God makes a promise. My presence will go with you. In 34, God comes and brings them the law represented. Moses had broken the first one. So God says, bring me stones. I'll do that again. The law is represented. Then in Exodus 35 is the beginning of the construction of the tabernacle. God's presence. Exodus 36 to the end, we see the finishing of the tabernacle, the hoisting of the tabernacle, and the end of the narrative. But notice with me in your reading, notice with me, if you haven't done that already, you haven't noticed already, notice with me how at the very end of the giving of the law, at the very end of Exodus, when we start Leviticus, God introduces to the Israelites the whole system of sacrifices. Burnt offerings, sin offerings, sacrifices begins in Exodus, in Leviticus, sorry. What point was God making to them? God was telling them, I've given you my law. I know you can't meet the tenets of the law. I know you will sin against me and there will be friction, there will be consequences, but I'm giving you all these sacrifices. Whenever you sin against me, come sacrifice to me and peace will be restored. God's presence also means God's peace. Friends in Christ, this evening, tonight, God's promise to you and to me is that his presence will go with us into this unknown new year. He will not leave us. He will not point out the way to us. He will take us by the hand and lead us. Take us. But there's one more thing to see. In our second reading, in the New Testament reading, we see that in God's presence is also God's power manifested. God's presence, God's power will be manifested. The presence of God doesn't guarantee us, does not insulate us from challenges problems, difficulties, no. The fact that Jesus is in the boat doesn't mean that problems will not come. The fact that problems come doesn't mean that Jesus has left them in the boat alone, no. But it is an opportunity for Jesus' power, the one who is present with us, the one who walks with us. When challenges arise at your workplace, at home, with your own work with the Lord, Notice that it is time, it is an opportunity for the Lord, Jesus Christ, who walks with you to demonstrate, to manifest his power in your life. 
So when any struggle comes up, any challenge comes up in the new year, anything you are going to wrestle with, any personal challenge, any difficulty in your personal life, at your workplace, at home, in your relationships, difficulties may come. But notice with me tonight that it is only an opportunity that the Lord is seeking to demonstrate his power in your life, through your life, in your situation. My presence will go with you. Just as he went with the people of Israel, his presence means protection for us. His presence means provision for us. His presence means peace in our lives. God's presence with us means his power will be at work in your life, in my life. Corporately, individually, we will know the power of God. That is why I don't think that we should let anything bother us. Don't allow yourself to be despondent at any time in this new year. Don't. Why? Because God's presence, God's promised presence will go with you, will go with me. Come what may. If it is not peace, you need maybe his provision. It will come. If not his provision, maybe his protection. It will come to you. He will provide it. If not, and it is his power you need to scale any wall, to handle any difficulty, to overcome any challenge, be certain that God will make that also available because his presence will go with you. And his presence is his person. To God alone be the glory for the promises made to us to God alone be the glory for the assurance that he's not man that he should lie, but the son of man that he should repent. Has he said that will he will not do it? Has he promised that he will not bring it to pass? He will indeed. Glory to God. Let us pray. Will you please give thanks to God for his promise to you and to me. My presence will go with you. You don't know what is going to happen in 2024, but my presence will go with you. I will not leave you alone. See how I journeyed with the Israelites. See how they wore shoes for 40 years that did not wear out. My provision was adequate for them. I'm able to supply your every need. Don't let despondency overtake you. Thank God for his promise. Thank God for the adequacy of his presence with us. Thank God that he keeps his promises. So we give you glory and praise, Lord God Almighty. Your word is true. Your promise is true. Every promise you make finds its yes and amen. Its fulfillment in Christ Jesus our Lord. And because we are that temple, his temple, he abides in us. Just as he guided, was with the Israelites, he is with us. He will be with us. His presence will go with us. So we shall not allow fear to overtake us. We shall not allow depression to rule our lives at any point. We will worship you, we will adore you. Even when the going is tough, we will remember that the Lord allows tough situations into our lives so that he will show himself strong in our behalf. Thank you, Lord, that we can depend on this promise of your presence with us. Come the end of 2024, we will celebrate your goodness, your faithfulness, and your loving kindness. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ our Lord, we pray with great thanksgiving. Amen. We appreciate you joining our service today. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking on the logo. And don't forget to like and share. See you next week. God bless you.